Okay, things that you need to know for your quiz as well as the practical exam. So I'm going to somewhat start at the top and kind of work my way down. So the first one I want to point at is here. This is the orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis oculi. Okay, this closes the eye. We also have another sphincter muscle called the orbicularis oris, which um, closes the mouth and, and uh, kind of uh, pooches the lips out in a duck face or a smooch. Okay, so orbicularis oris. Hopefully you're still smiling, and if you are, if you're smiling, you're using your zygomaticus muscles, which are here and here. We have a major and a minor, and you need to know the difference. The top one is the zygomaticus minor muscle. Zygomaticus minor muscle. And below that is the zygomaticus major muscle. Zygomaticus major muscle. We have two muscles of mastication or chewing, and they include the masseter and the temporalis. Here on the deeper side, we see the temporalis muscle, and that is here over the temporal bone, the temporalis muscle one of the muscles of mastication or chewing. So when this muscle contracts, it's going to elevate or lift the mandible up. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and look at the other side here for the second muscle of mastication that you need to know. And this right here is the masseter, the masseter. Flexion of the masseter closes the mandible or elevates the mandible. Okay. The masseter. The masseter is underneath the parotid gland, which is here. That's one of the salivary glands. And we'll go over that later when we go over the digestive tract. Okay. Another muscle that you need to know is here on the superficial side. And that's this weird looking muscle here. Just remember this muscle lies in the cheek. Because it's in the cheek, I want you to remember the buccal region. Think of a person blowing on a bugle, okay, the buccal region. So that makes this muscle here the buccinator, the buccinator. So the buccinator is the muscle in the cheeks. This helps you to be able to keep food in your mouth and kind of um, um, assist to keep the food between your teeth when you're chewing. So it's not a muscle of mastication, but it definitely assists when you're chewing your food. So the muscle of the neck that you need to know, only one of them for my class, and that is here. And this muscle is actually shown on both sides of this model, so I'll show you both of those. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle sometimes just shortened to the SCM muscle. And the reason that it has such an odd name is it actually has uh, its origin on the sternum, that's the sterno part, and on the clavicle, which is the clido part, and its insertion point is at the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Okay. So for this reason, that's why this is called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. All right. Just for completeness sake, let's make sure that you can identify it on the other side as well. Okay, the sternocleidomastoid, and that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, or SCM. But yes, for me, I want you to actually spell it out. So just to recall that um, this is the superficial side of the muscle model. So these are more surface muscles. And here where you see the ribs, these are the deeper muscles on this side. Okay. So the broad muscle of the chest here, this whole thing here, is the pectoralis major muscle. The pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major. If I were to remove this, I would expose this muscle here, 
which is the pectoralis minor muscle. The pectoralis minor muscle. And this is the trapezius. So the trapezius is one of those that's more surface. I can see exposed bone on this side, so this is going to be the deeper side of the muscle, or I'm sorry, deeper side of the muscle model, and the more superficial side of the muscle model here. So the trapezius muscle is very large and it includes three big sections. It includes this section here, this section here, and this section here. So all together, this is called the trapezius, the trapezius. It's the large muscle in the back. This is actually the medial portion of the scapula here. This is the spine of the scapula. Okay, if I continue to go upward, I see it flattens out to form the acromion process of the scapula. So let's go over the muscles of the shoulder in this area. So again, these are going to be the deeper muscles of the shoulder, whereas this here is going to be the more superficial muscles of the shoulder, which includes the deltoid, which I'll come back to in a minute and show you a better view of it. So because this is the spine of the scapula, the muscle above it or superiorly is called the supraspinatus. The supraspinatus. This is one of the rotator cuff muscles. Supraspinatus. Similarly, the muscle that lies underneath the spine of the scapula is the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus, because it lies inferiorly to the spine of the, uh, the, spine of the scapula. Now, I also have um, one more muscle of the rotator cuff that I can see here. The rotator cuff muscles are going to include the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, which is just right here. And there's a fourth one that is not visible in this particular model because it lies underneath the scapula and it's the subscapularis, but we can see it in the arm model, and I will show you that before, um, before we're done today. Okay. So um, infraspinatus, this is the teres minor, and if you look at the teres major, so here is the teres major. Okay. The teres major is not considered one of the rotator cuff muscles because it's actually going to attach, if you look very closely, so I'm going to follow that up. It actually attaches to the front of the humerus. So for that reason, it, even though it's right in that same region, it's not attached to the back of the humerus. It's attached to the front of it. So for that reason, we don't consider it one of the rotator cuff muscles. But it is right there nonetheless. So, so teres major, teres minor, infraspinatus, supraspinatus. Okay. And then, of course, the subscapularis, which I'll show you later. Right. So let's look at this side, <coughs> the more superficial side. Um, here we see the deltoid. Okay, the deltoid gets its name because of its triangular shape. Let's try to get it in all of its glory here. All right. So it's going to include this whole muscle here. All right. If you're interested, this portion right here is part of the triceps brachii. Okay. So the deltoid. All right, let's return to the back. So we mentioned earlier that this whole thing is the trapezius, the trapezius. All right, so I have this broad muscle here that is on the superficial side of our model. This is the latissimus dorsi, the latissimus dorsi. Dorsi means back and latissimus means wide. And we can kind of see why this might have gotten that name, the latissimus dorsi. Here and here that makes up the bulk of the buttocks is the, the gluteus maximus, the gluteus maximus. I, tr I try to tell people that I'm, I'm going to the gym to try to get my gluteus maximus to be my gluteus minimus, but that's not exactly how it works in, uh, in anatomy. So this is the gluteus maximus. This area here on the side is actually the gluteus medius. 
And the reason why this is important is because there are injections that are given in this muscle. Okay, so the gluteus medius is here. So in here we see gluteus maximus and gluteus medius. Um, what are they called? The um, costal cartilages are the cartilages that um, attach the ribs to the sternum. Um, so costal, the word costal means of the ribs. So we have uh, two sets of intercostal muscles that you need to know. We've got the internal intercostals and the external intercostals. The internal intercostals are actually rotated more forward and they are going to attach to the sternum. The external intercostals are going to lie over the internal intercostals. So for that reason, the only place that I can ask for the internal intercostal muscles is going to be here, 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 and here. Okay. And if you look real carefully, there's actually a line here. Do you see this? Okay. Now, I'm not going to try to be tricky here. I, I could put like a sticker right here to see if you remember that this is external, this is internal. I'm not going to be that mean. I'm going to be really obvious with it. So, you know, I don't think I have to try to trick you. So, um, but technically it's from this line here. Okay. And then this is the external, just, just so you know, but I'm not going to try to trick you. Okay. But internal intercostal muscles will be all of this. All of this will be external intercostals. And here I've got that line again. This is showing that these are internal intercostals, but like I said, I'm not gonna worry about that. So if I'm asking internal, it'll be right here. If I'm asking external, it's gonna be over here or, it, or over here or even over, over there. So external intercostals are these. I can also ask you back here. And I even have some more areas here. All of this would be external intercostal muscles. Here, straight in front, this is the rectus abdominis, the rectus abdominis, okay. The rectus abdominis, and here I've got that six pack, okay, the linea alba would be here, all right. So the rectus abdominis, rectus means straight, so the striations here are straight up and down, okay. Now I have the ribs on this side. So the ribs are on this side, which means this is internal. These are deeper muscles here. So for that reason, when I look at these muscles here, I want to think of internal obliques. Okay, these are internal obliques. All right, internal because they are on the, they are deeper. And um, oblique because the striations here are at an oblique angle or diagonal. Now, if I look at the more superficial side, on this side, I actually can see the external obliques. And I can see that these also run oblique, but in a different angle. So these lie in this plane, and the internal lie, uh, sorry, in this plane. See that? So the inside of the breastplate here, of the torso, here is the transverse abdominis, called the transverse abdominis because the striations are going to lie in the transverse or horizontal plane. Transverse abdominis. Okay. So if you cough really hard, you're probably engaging your uh, transverse abdominis muscles. In martial arts, when you go, huh, okay, that's also engaging those muscles. You might be engaging those muscles if you are having childbirth or a bowel movement. <laughs> Not that they're the same thing. <laughs> All right, so in this model, here is the orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis oculi. Around the mouth, we have the orbicularis oris. Orbicularis oris. If you are still smiling, you're using your zygomaticus minor muscle and your zygomaticus major muscle. Both of those are going to function to uh, proof out your happy cheeks and lift the corners of the mouth up in a smile. Okay. So minor is on top, major is on the bottom.
On the deeper side of our model, here we see the temporalis muscle. One of the muscles of mastication functions to elevate the mandible and it's attached to the mandible right here if you really look closely. So that's how this is the muscle that is allowing, uh, one of the two muscles that helps you to chew. Okay. So temporalis muscle, because it lies over the temporal bone. Your other muscle of mastication lies underneath this uh, salivary gland here, which is actually the parotid gland. But here, this is the masseter, the masseter muscle. Now underneath the masseter, we have a muscle that lies in the cheek right here. And this muscle is called the buccinator, the buccinator. And it gets its name because it lies in the buccal region or the region of the cheek, the buccinator. And for the muscles of the neck that you need to know, um, here is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So there's its attachment point with the mastoid of the temporal bone. And in the front, you can't really see where it's attached to, but it would be attached to the sternum and the clavicle here. So sternocleidomastoid muscle, sternocleidomastoid muscle. And in this model, it's only on one side and not the other. They actually have it removed to show some deeper muscles on this model. Things you might notice here is I've got this, it gets its name from uh, its shape being like a trapezoid. And this is the trapezius, the trapezius muscle, okay, the trapezius. So here is that trapezius muscle, much better view now, trapezius muscle. I see a muscle of the shoulder here. This is the deltoid, okay, called deltoid because it has a roughly triangular shape or the shape of a delta. Here I see this broad muscle of the lower back and this whole thing is the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. Dorsi means back, latissimus means wide. Latissimus dorsi. So here I see the gluteus maximus, also on this side too, the gluteus maximus makes up the bulk of the buttocks. And if I go just to the side here, okay, this region right here is the gluteus medius, the gluteus medius. If you're interested, the gluteus minimus is actually <coughs> underneath these muscles. You can't see it from this view. But I did want to point out the gluteus medius because this is where we give some of the uh, some injections for certain things. Okay, so gluteus maximus, gluteus medius. Okay. So, and here's the deltoid here on this side. I could take it off and show more, but I won't, I'm just gonna leave it on there. So here is the spine of the scapula or scapular spine. So here is the supraspinatus, one of the rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus. From here to here, all of this is the infraspinatus, the infraspinatus. Okay. Also one of the rotator cuff muscles. And then here's another rotator cuff muscle called the teres minor, the teres minor, just this little, that number eight right there, this little triangle. Okay. And this is the teres major, not one of the rotator cuff muscles, but still in the same area and you do need to know it. Not, one, not considered one of the rotator cuff muscles because it attaches to the anterior humerus instead of the posterior humerus. Um, here I've got the pectoralis major, the pectoralis major. If I were to take off the pectoralis major, I would expose the pectoralis minor muscle, which is here on this side, pectoralis minor. I have two sets of intercostal muscles one of them is rotated forward and attaches to the sternum, and the other is rotated backwards and is uh, closer to the spine. So here are the internal intercostal muscles here. So internal intercostals are here, and this, if, if you look real closely, there's a little division here, which shows just the start of the external intercostals here, here, and here. External, external, external. 
So all of these are external intercostal muscles. If I continue to go to the back, I expose more of the external intercostal muscles. Sorry, here, here, and there, external intercostal muscles. Um, one of the things you might notice first is the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis. Rectus means straight, so here I see the striations in the rectus abdominis are straight up and down, they're vertical. Okay, so rectus abdominis. On this side, because it's the deeper side, this would be the internal obliques. The internal obliques, oblique because it's at a diagonal. On the more superficial side, these would be considered the external obliques. The external obliques. So the last thing you need to know is the transverse abdominis. So in this model here, on here and here, this is the transverse abdominis. The transverse abdominis. This is the deepest layer of abdominal muscles. Transverse abdominis. Okay, so here is the arm model. Um, so before we get started with the muscles, let me just give you a couple of landmarks to get you oriented on where we're at in the body. So if we look at this portion, this is actually the clavicle right here, the clavicle. Um, this is the acromion of the scapula here, the acromion or acromial process. And this is the spine of the scapula here. And knowing that is going to help you to know your rotator cuff muscles. So let's go ahead and start with those. Your rotator cuff muscles are going to include the supraspinatus, because this is over the spine of the scapula. So supraspinatus under the spine of the scapula. So this entire area here, labeled seven in this model, is the infraspinatus, because it lies beneath or under the spine of the scapula. So infraspinatus. Okay. This small triangle here, is the teres minor, the teres minor. And it's not one of the rotator cuff muscles, but um, in the same area, I have the teres major, which is right here, the teres major. So we have four rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the next one, or the last one, is only seen in this arm model, and it's located here. And this is the subscapularis, subscapularis. Called that because it lies deep, All right? So subscapularis. This view is actually, um, this is an anatomical position. Um, this is actually the posterior view, okay? This would be looking from the back if somebody was in anatomical position. Okay, this large muscle here of the shoulder is the deltoid, the deltoid. It's called the deltoid because it looks like the Greek letter delta. In other words, it looks like a triangle. So the deltoid. We have the triceps brachii here and here. The triceps brachii. Brachii, because it's in the brachial region, remember this is the area of, this is the uh, brachial region here, region of the arm, okay? Triceps means three heads, okay? So this is a three-headed muscle. Triceps brachii, the triceps brachii, okay? Just so you can see a little bit more of this, here I can see the triceps brachii and triceps brachii here. Now, in between the triceps brachii and the biceps brachii, we have the brachialis, okay? So the brachialis is, is easy to find if you look at this little tendon here at the base of the deltoid, that's gonna point right at the brachialis, all right? And then here is the biceps brachii. We'll get a better view when we flip it around. So top view from this way, here's the deltoid. There's that brachialis, brachialis. 
And then here is the biceps brachii muscle. Biceps brachii muscle. And then here is the coracobrachialis muscle, coracobrachialis muscle. It's called that because it actually is going to attach to the uh, coracoid process of the scapula. Okay, so coracobrachialis. And then from this view, here I've got triceps brachii. So those are all the muscles that you need to know for the arm. All right, now we're going to move to the forearm. Um, this is the anterior view at the moment. One of my favorite muscles for some reason, <laughs> I think because it's just easy to, to pick. Um, so this right here would be that antecubital region. That's the region of the inner elbow. All right, just to give you an idea of kind of where we're at in the body. This muscle here, because it kind of goes off to the side, this is called the pronator teres. The pronator teres. This allows us to do pronation. Okay, so this is supination, pronation. So pronator teres. Now there's a couple of generalities with the um, with what we call the forearm, or you might remember the antebrachial region of the body. My flexors are going to lie anteriorly. My extensors are going to lie posteriorly. All right. So in general, these are going to be our extensors, and these will be our flexors. Here we have the pronator teres. And let's go ahead and look at this muscle here. If we follow this muscle and we see where its tendon is, this tendon is going straight to the thumb. This is going to be a flexor. What is it going to flex? It's going to flex the wrist, so carpi. So flexor, carpi, and what side is it on? It's on the thumb side, so the radialis side, okay, side of the radius. So for that reason, we call this the flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi radialis. Okay. The next muscle over, which is right here, if we follow this tendon and we see where it goes, it's actually going to go straight to the middle of the palm. You see that here? And it's going to go straight to these middle fingers. So this is going to control the middle fingers here, the ring finger and the middle finger. So this one is called, because it's going towards the palm, this is the palmaris longus. The palmaris longus. Now, deep to this area, we have uh, flexors of the digits. And I can, see, I can see it in just two little areas here at the wrist, here and here. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis, okay? Superficialis, because it's a more superficial muscle than the other muscles that move the digits. So flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum superficialis. And it's just here, unless I take off these muscles, then I can see more of it, but I'd rather you not do that, because these fall apart as soon as you start taking them apart. <laughs> so. Now, this is still considered the flexor side, even though it's really like far over. <laughs> but um, so remember, we have the pronator teres. I've got the flexor carpi radialis, the uh, palmaris longus, the flexor digitorum superficialis. And then here, I've got another flexor of the, uh, of the carpals or the wrist area. And this one is going to be on the ulnar side. So this one is going to be the flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris. Here is that inner elbow, the antecubital region. And so the short muscle that we have here is the pronator teres. But I have this longer muscle. Do you see this one here? That also kind of makes this same shape, but it's more superficial and longer, more visible. Okay, this one is the uh, brachioradialis. Radialis because it's going to go straight to the thumb. Brachioradialis. If you're wondering if, why is it called brachial, well here's the brachialis. So I can go brachialis, brachioradialis. 
So deltoid, brachialis, here's the biceps brachii, all right? There's that pronator teres. So brachialis, brachioradialis. Another way to find this is, um, this is actually a nerve here. So this first fork of this nerve is gonna go straight to the brachioradialis. And it kind of curves around the arm like so. Brachialis, brachioradialis. So this is going to be extensors, the extensors. So let's see where these tendons go so we can see what its name should be. So this longer one here, the one that's more noticeable, let's see where it goes. It's gonna be an extensor. So I've got extensor carpi radialis, but I've got two of them here. So this is gonna be the extensor carpi radialis longus, okay, because it's the longer one. Extensor carpi radialis longus, and the shorter one next to it, brevis means brief or short. Okay, so this one is going to be the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Extensor carpi radialis brevis. Okay, so longus and brevis. All right, the next one I do have to admit is my favorite. I do have a favorite muscle. And the reason is because this is your flipping off muscle. All right, use it sparingly and wisely. This muscle that goes straight in the back of your antibrachial region. And if I follow this down, I could see the tendons are gonna go, oh, look, it goes to my favorite finger. Isn't that nice? Okay, so in reality, it doesn't just go to the middle finger, it actually goes to the middle finger and the ring finger. <laughs> but uh, it's a good way to remember it because you really won't forget it when, you, when I call it the flipping off muscle because that's just awesome. <laughs> so this is the extensor, and what is it going to extend? The digits. So this is the extensor digitorum. Extensor digitorum. So I have one more muscle here I want you to know here at number 32. And this is, it's gonna be an extensor again, but now it's on the ulnar side. So this is going to be the extensor carpi ulnaris. Okay, extensor carpi ulnaris. Deltoid, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major, triceps brachii, brachialis, biceps brachii, brachialis, brachioradialis, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, the extensor digitorum, the extensor carpi ulnaris, the subscapularis, deltoid, biceps brachii, this is the coracobrachialis, triceps brachii, pronator teres, brachioradialis, the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, the flexor carpi ulnaris. And here we have the flexor digitorum superficialis. Here is your leg. The way that I have this oriented right now, this is the lateral side. Okay, so this is the lateral side. Here is the gluteus maximus, the gluteus maximus. And next, let's go ahead and look at the hamstring muscles. So here's that gluteus maximus again. Um, we have three hamstring muscles. The one that lies laterally, remember this is the lateral side. So this is the, um, the biceps femoris. Biceps, because it's a two-headed muscle. Femoris, because it's in the femoral region. Remember, this is the, where the femur is, okay? And that's the femoral region. So the biceps femoris, 
The second hamstring muscle that I want you to know is here, and this is the semitendinosus. The semitendinosus. The third hamstring muscle is mostly hidden from view, but I can see it just here. And see this little number right here? And this portion here. Okay. So this is part of that muscle that's hidden. This is the semimembranosus. So the semimembranosus is visible here and here semimembranosus, so semitendinosus, semimembranosus. So remember that the semitendinosus tends to sit over the semimembranosus, okay? I have a very large muscle that is on the lateral side, and it's actually called very large muscle because this is the vastus lateralis. So this here, and then forget about the tendon for now. And then this here, it runs underneath this tendon. So this area and this area, this is the vastus lateralis. It's one of your quadriceps muscles. Vastus lateralis, and it's really vast. We have this large tendon here, and this large tendon is controlled by this muscle here. This is the tensor fascia latte. So it's called tensor fascia because see all this fascia that's here? It's got a lot of fascia with this. Tensor fascia latte and it's got this nice long tendon associated with it. So this sits laterally, so this is the vastus lateralis. This is going to be the vastus medialis, the vastus medialis of the quadriceps muscles. This muscle is the main quadriceps muscle, and this is the rectus femoris. Rectus femoris. Now, we have a fourth hamstring muscle that you're not going to be quizzed on because I can't show it to you without taking this off, and I don't want to do that. So, but underneath here is the fourth quadriceps muscle, which is the vastus intermedius. All right. So I've got the vastus intermedius, the rectus femoris, vastus medialis, and vastus lateralis. So this is the front side here. This is medial. And this is part of that rectus femoris. This is that vastus medialis of the quadriceps. And one of the things that you might notice first off is this long strap-like muscle. And this long strap-like muscle is called the sartorius, the sartorius. The sartorius is the muscle that I like to call the hacky sack muscle. <laughs> so if you were playing hacky sack or kicking a soccer ball straight up in the air, or if you're crossing your legs, all right, all of those mo motions are made possible due to this sartorius muscle, which is here, the sartorius. So rectus femoris, vastus medialis, sartorius, sartorius. You might recall that muscles that are going to go on the medial side of a joint are going to cause adduction. Okay, they're going to cause movement towards the midline of the body. So we have some adductors in the area, ADD, adductors. Okay, this is the adductor longus. And you might say, well, it doesn't look very long. It is. It continues underneath here. You just can't see it superficially. So adductor longus, adductor longus. And the next one we have over, so this is the adductor longus. And then here, here, and here is all the same muscle. This is the adductor magnus. Magnus because it's big. Okay, so adductor magnus. Adductor longus, adductor magnus. Okay. And I have one muscle that's very straight that sits as medially as you can get. Okay. This is the gracilis. I think of a gracious dancer, okay, like a ballet dancer doing like a plie or something like that. So gracilis, 
the gracilis. That's the gracilis. Here's part of that adductor magnus. And then now we're back at the hamstring muscles again. You might remember this is the semimembranosus here and here, and the semitendinosus that tends to sit over the semimembranosus. And then we're back at of the hamstrings, which you might recall is the biceps femoris, the biceps femoris. These muscles here are called the gastrocnemius muscles, gastrocnemius. And it has its rather odd name because it's named after gastroc, meaning stomach. So I guess because they kind of bulge out a little bit that maybe they look like little stomachs. So gastrocnemius muscles here and here. If I point to just this area, just underneath the gastrocnemius muscles, this is the soleus, the soleus. You might remember that the fibula lies on the outside of the leg, right? This is the fibularis longus, sometimes referred to as the peroneus. Okay, peroneus or fibularis longus. I prefer fibularis longus because it gives you a hint. Because if you look at where it's at, then, okay, fibula, then hopefully you can jog your memory to think of fibularis longus. All right, so fibularis longus. This portion that lies underneath the gastrocnemius, this is the soleus, the soleus, gastrocnemius, gastrocnemius. And then on this side, soleus, the soleus. This is actually the tibia here the tibia, so here's your shin bone, this muscle that lies over the tibia here is the, the tibialis anterior. Tibialis anterior. So let's go ahead and just look at these again real quickly to just kind of refresh your memory. So I've got the gluteus maximus. If I point way over here, I could say gluteus medius. Okay, so gluteus maximus, gluteus medius. This is the vastus lateralis here and here. Tensor fascia lattes right here. This is the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, adductor magnus, 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 adductor magnus, the gracilis, gracilis, the sartorius, okay, here's that adductor magnus, adductor longus, sartorius, vastus medialis, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, tensor fascia latte, tibialis anterior, fibularis longus or peroneus, soleus, soleus, gastrocnemius, gastrocnemius, soleus, peroneus or fibularis longus, the tibialis anterior.